Now at 7, Weather Authority alerts something messy is on the way. Tonight, helping you plan Thanksgiving travel times. Big on! Yeah! Our on! Yeah! Who's on? Oh! No more of that. Dino is done. And tonight we look ahead, revealing new information about the last straw in his firing. And who might be next for the SU football team? A new ruling on the Columbus statue in downtown Syracuse. This is NBC3 News at 7 with Michael Benny, winner of the Edward R. Murrow Award for Overall Excellence. Good evening. It's an unsettled lead up to Thanksgiving with a storm system sweeping across the eastern part of the country tomorrow and Wednesday, the two busiest travel days of the year. Tonight, as the sun went down over Syracuse, it started to cloud up. We know there are so many families rethinking travel plans right now, looking for the window that will allow for the smoothest way of getting from here to there. AAA says 55.4 million of us will be traveling. Most of us, about 49 million, give or take, will drive to where we're going. Let's get the latest on the Weather Authority Alert. Meteorologist Josh Kozlowski is in the Weather Center tonight. Hello. Yes, Michael. Over the weekend, we were talking about how today would be a beautiful day for travel. Checkbox there. We got that going. Tonight's still quiet. Tomorrow morning is okay. But here's our winter weather advisory for tomorrow afternoon. Tuesday afternoon throughout this time in the evening. It could be a little messy here at times. Some wet snow and some sleet and rain for places like Oswego County. Oneida County there in northern sections of the county. Even here in Syracuse, we're not under the alert, but there still could be a brief period between about 3 and 7 p.m. And it came out of messy here, but quickly change over to rain for us. I think a lot of spots like Syracuse, just low elevation, cold rain. To our south and west, that is where all the rain is currently. The clouds come in tonight. We will still be cold in advance of the rain getting here, but I think we'll have time tomorrow, Michael, to warm up above the freezing mark before most spots see the rain and snow begin. So that's some good things to take out of this forecast here. Wind chills will be picking up too as winds pick up tomorrow night. Now, as we go through the rest of the week here, early up to Thanksgiving, which time frame looks best for driving and flying? I've got a new forecast graphic on that and the 10 day coming up. Thank you, Josh. You can now get free COVID-19 tests delivered once again. Every household is eligible to order at least four free at home tests. If you haven't ordered any of these this fall, you can get up to eight of them. The kits will be mailed to your house for free. If you're interested, visit COVID dot gov slash tests to order them. The group trying to stop the mayor of Syracuse from removing the statue of Christopher Columbus downtown cannot re-argue its case and can't take the case to the highest court in the state to be heard. That's a win for Syracuse Mayor Ben Walsh, who's called for the removal of the statue and the creation of a new city park to celebrate Italian Americans and all groups that have contributed to the city. The mayor's office has not said if it'll take action now to take the statue down. And the Columbus Monument Corporation, which is trying to keep the statue right where it is, could file more legal action if the statue is taken down. New details on breaking news tonight, live at the JMA Wireless Dome. It's a new era for Syracuse athletics about to begin. Dino Babers, as you probably know by now, is out as head coach of the football team. It is a terrible thing to be fired from a job. If you ever have been, you know that. And it has to be extra odd when the fact that you got fired is on the news, it's on sports radio, it's everywhere. Sure, making millions of dollars can ease the blow to some degree. But before we look ahead and dissect any of this anymore, it is important to recognize that getting fired is difficult stuff. And it can be painful no matter how much money is in your checking account. SU's athletic director John Wildhack said he told Babers a 7-5 and five record was the benchmark he needed to keep his job. Then Syracuse lost to Georgia Tech. Dino Babers simply didn't win enough games. But the athletic director said he's thankful for the coach's impact on Syracuse University. I just want to thank uh, Coach Babers for his contributions and his commitment to our program, our university, and our community. Um, he's a class act a class act and a class person. The success or the failures of SU's headline sports teams have a huge impact on the local economy. New at 7, Connor White reports. The Dome is a dominating presence over Syracuse. The football program? Not so much. 
I just want to thank uh, Coach Babers. Saturday's loss against Georgia Tech forced Syracuse University's athletic director John Wildhack's hand, firing Dino Babers after telling him he needed at least seven wins to hold on to the job. Babers finishes with a record of 41 wins and 55 losses over eight seasons with the Orange. I expect us, and we can be a winning program. We're not that far away. Wildhack says part of the decision to let Babers go now is to get a jump on finding his replacement, promising that the program will improve under new direction. There's no doubt that winning puts people in the seats. Visit Syracuse CEO Danny Lidka says the new coach and the team's ability to compete in the ACC is critical for the central New York economy. What happens in there has a direct impact on the people who travel here and spend. When you look at the attendance numbers and then when you go back and look at the metrics for the hotel industry and the restaurants, they certainly do a lot better on those weekends. The demand is very, very high and, and everybody's making some money. He says that a strong D1 team can serve as an asset as Syracuse looks to grow under projects like Micron. Wildhack says that in turn, Syracuse's future is a selling point for bringing in a new face. There's a lot of momentum in this community. And for a coach, you know, this is a great place to raise a family. So there's a lot of attributes here, and I'm going to emphasize that. We asked about how involved Chancellor Kent Sivrood or the school's board of trustees would be. Wildhack simply said that the chancellor would have to sign off on his final decision. Not willing to provide a budget on this coach search or their future wage, just saying they'll be competitive. Dino Babers was making just more than $4 million per year. In studio, I'm Connor White. Exclusive tonight, the Orange Zone podcast team answering some new questions. Does this departure come too late? What about the demands on a new head coach? Will there be an accelerated timeline? Tommy Sladek and Samantha Croston are in the Orange Zone Studio podcast as we talk about this. So, Tommy, let's start with, does, was it too late? I mean, should this have happened years ago? I don't think so just because of the way this all played out, Michael. Mm -hmm. The, the Dino Babers was the highs and the lows. You've heard me use the word roller coaster in the past, and those high moments had this city so bought in. You look back to the 10 wins in 2018, and then last year, a 6-0 and start. They were top 15 in the country, and then that late slide. 4-0 start this year, and another slide as the season continues, and that ultimately ended up being his downfall. Mm. Uh, let's assume that John Wildhack is still the athletic director, you know, four years from now. So there's a new, how much longer, how much longer does the, the new head football coach get to prove what he can do? Is, does the timeline change? Yeah. Good question. I think it depends on where you are, right? Some of these humongous schools down south in the SEC, their expectations are the ceiling. And if that's not happening within normally the first three, four years, they're done. I think it's a, a minimum of three years unless something's just catastrophic in that first 12 to 24 months where the coach loses the players. But ultimately, you look to there to be at least three to four years for that to really come into place. And, of course, what happens in that time? Sam, there's a phrase like nice guys finish last. I mean, Dino Babers was seen as a nice guy uh, community-wide. Uh, but sometimes nice guys get shown the door. That's that's how it is, right? And listen, that is hard to say. And you're right. The phrase that does keep on coming to my mind is nice doesn't pay the bills, right? Mm. You want a team that has a winning culture. That is what this fan base is looking for. They want more wins and more excitement around this culture because this football team and their wins and losses impact the community so much in either direction. But that being said, I do think it's important to point out that Dino Babers really was a nice guy. And you know what? That matters. Having a coach that the players relied upon and having a coach that the community really mm. admired and respected. I mean, if you are going to be shown the door, isn't that the way that you would like to be shown out the door is knowing that people had all that respect for you? Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's uh, take a moment now and look back at the Babers uh, time at Syracuse University. Ashley Winskowski has that part of the story now. The Dome was Dino Baber's house for nearly eight seasons. Eight years is a long time, and it's an eternity in Power Five college football. Eight years full of motivational speeches, smiles, and sayings from a man who made Syracuse football into his ohana. It was an era filled with some very high highs and some even lower lows. 
Today, around 3.30 in the morning, a.m., I got fired up and uh, got out here and started moving around. It was good to be back on the football field. I think everybody's got that attitude right now. We're only as good as our offensive line on offense. We're only as good as our defensive line on defense. And the hippos, the hippos and the elephants, when those guys grow up and they start ruling the jungle on the land and the jungle in the water, then you've got a chance to, to make some head waves. One look at the numbers shows why it was time to move on. I think the entire team was behind him. I think even the community is behind him. But like I say, uh, the end result is you want to have a winner. And I like the guy. I always did. I supported him. I thought he was a wonderful man. You know, but uh, it's time. That's plain and simple. Smiles can't buy wins. There just were never enough wins to save his job. But Babers will be remembered for bleeding SU Orange for eight seasons. And though all of his promise only ever ended in moments, they were moments this community won't soon forget. In Syracuse, I'm Ashley Wenskowski. And you know what, guys? Yes, these coaches, and when they get bought out, they're making money. Mm. But he and his family have... They've been here for eight years. He's had grandkids born in this time. Yeah. And that's something to take away from this song. Your record on the field matters. Your legacy matters more. And he will be remembered here as a great guy. Yeah. No, oh, getting fired. Uh, boy, there's nothing to disrupt a family like, uh, like somebody getting fired. That's for sure. It's good to point that out. Thank you both. The Orange Zone podcast you can listen to anywhere you get your podcasts. And they have fresh perspective on this breaking news from SU football. The Orange Zone podcast. Listen to it tonight if you'd like. Coming up on NBC3 News at 7, local leaders say the system is broken. What's being done to improve child protective services after a high-profile case in Onondaga County? He says marrying Rosalind was the best decision he ever made. Tonight, a look back at the Carter's remarkable love story.